Hi everybody, welcome back to T News Live at the Aviation Festival, presented by JetBlue Technology Ventures and sponsored by Travel Air. My name is Martin Cowan, I'm Editorial Director. On the sofa with me now, I've got Itai Zlotnik, who's the Chief Customer Officer and Co-Founder of Climacell, which is a business that JetBlue Technology JetBlue Technology Ventures has invested in. Um, I must admit, I had to Google frantically when I realized I had to talk to Climacell because it wasn't a business I was aware of. So, uh, uh, Itai, sorry about that. If you could just sort of um, spare viewers the pain of having to Google Climacell and just tell us exactly what it is that you do. So, uh, at Climacell, we're a global leader in micro weather. Uh, we find innovative ways to sense the environment. Um, so one of the issues today is that the entire industry uses the same sources of data. We package it and sold it to you. So basically there are, all of them are at the same exact level of weather information. And okay. we are the only company in the world that basically find ways like wireless networks and IoT to sense the environment. Okay, so it's so sort of micro weather and you're saying that the weather, I wasn't aware of this, but the weather industry, there's almost a, a monopoly of providers that Exactly. provide the information, but you take a different approach and you use the Internet of Things. Exactly, the entire it. industry uses the uh, data that is provided for free by the government. Okay. And just repackage it and uh, sell it to you. Okay. Um, for me it was, uh, we, I can tell you the story and everything. Yeah, the, please do, yeah. yeah. So, uh, my background, I was an officer in uh, elite commander unit, uh, the equivalent mm. of the Delta Force just in Israel. Yeah. And for me personally, when I had to lead my uh, soldiers in the field, I wasn't concerned about the weather two <laughs> days or three, uh, five days from now. All I wanted to have is like real-time information that I could yeah. act on. Yeah. And as of today, if you look on the current data, um, you don't have good enough data. Okay. The data is surprising almost everybody in the world. Um, and we try to have better real-time information and better short-term prediction models um, in order to improve the certainty of people around weather. Okay, so I mean, is, and is your weather forecasting more accurate than the generic data that's sourced from Yeah, so as of today, if you look on the traditional weather companies, you get um, weather information in the best case down to the zip code so they can tell you something about your city. And mm. uh, when it comes to climate cell, we're providing you data down to the street level. Um, okay. So we know street by street what is happening and we refresh the data every minute. Um, and so wherever people live, you can actually be, understand exactly what the information is. Okay, I mean that's, that sounds sort of really, really, really quite clever being able to get sort of weather forecasting down to, down to the street level. But in terms of you know, here at the, the Avia Aviation Festival and as a JetBlue Technology Ventures um, investment, I mean, what's your, what's your relationship with the, mu com with the airline community? I mean, how does your sort of real time targeted weather forecasting fit into the airline industry? Yeah, so the thing is that um, the extreme weather, it uh, happens really, really rarely. So yeah. even in Boston where we have like crazy weather, to be honest, we have only like 10 or 20 days. And we found that um, as of today with all the climate change, uh, there is a lot of deviation from the expected. Mm -hmm. And so weather surprising more people every day. And so what we're doing basically is we help the operation people at the airport to better understand okay. what is happening at their hub, at their location. Uh, sometimes it's just merely enough to have fog event, to have you know, 12 or 15 cancellation or um, you know, diversions. And we basically help them to understand what they're up against in terms of the weather and then help to create basically situational awareness at the airport. Okay, so it's almost providing a more accurate, quicker weather forecast so that the airline, airline operations at the airports can yeah. adapt accordingly. Exactly, so okay. we're not trying to replace the meteorologists at the headquarters. They are mm -hmm. kind of you know, overseeing the okay. long-term plan. We're helping the hub manager, the supervisor at the hub to better understand what is happening at their location because the headquarters would say something like, you're expecting to have snow today. 
Yeah. But we would say, hey, listen, uh, between uh, 3 and 4 p.m., it's not only about you know, 30 or 40% of mm. uh, precipitation probability. Uh, we would say something like at 3.20 p.m., rain will start. Okay. And then 3.40 p.m., rain will stop. And that's actionable item because they know they can push the throughput until 320 mm. and then you know, slow, slow down a little bit. And then from 340 or whatever it is, when the rain stops, they can continue and push okay. the operation. So I mean, are, are climate cell clients the, the airports or the airlines? The, again? Uh, so I mean, are your clients, are your customers the, the airlines or the, the airports? The airlines. Okay. The airline and the airports as well, yep. both. Uh, for uh, airports perspective is more planning and staffing and you know snow removal uh, for the airlines um, it's about uh, throughput safety so we have a uh, lighting prediction model that can help them better understand you know okay. when the lighting will hit the airport and then you know close the ramps and make sure that people are in safe environment um, but also about all the de-icing processes and uh, we're able to better understand like snow versus slit uh, versus rain. Okay. So the sensitivity of the technology is much better. Okay, and you said that you, you source the data from a variety of sources, so that's sort of like Internet of Things. Exactly. And I think I read that you did something I didn't quite understand, but with the wireless network, so you picked yeah. up weather data from that. So how does that work? Um, yeah, so um, in addition to all the public data that we collect, uh, we try to find innovative ways to sense the environment. Uh, wireless networks is one example. Mm. Um, basically, we look on the, instead of looking on the communication side of things, we look on the disruptions to the signals, and then whenever the signal attenuates, you can actually understand that there was precipitation. Um, so basically, we monitor the disruptions instead of the communication itself. And based okay. on that, we are able to understand like fog, humidity, and precipitation events. Okay, that sounds really clever stuff. So you're saying that when the, 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 the wireless signal fluctuates, however, exactly. there might Every be a weather-related yeah. reason for that fluctuation yeah. that you can then pick up, mixed with your other data, yeah, exactly. and come up with a Exactly, okay. basically everything that contains water in the air will yeah. affect the microwave signal. So you can think about the wireless networks as point-to-point -point radars. Yeah. Uh, so instead of having only one radar in the city, you have hundreds or thousands of yeah. uh, sense or data points in the city. Uh, for example, last week there was, uh, the radar was down in Seattle. So the entire weather industry didn't have data for about six hours. Mm -hmm. We are the only one to actually monitor and predict the rain event that was um, for about three hours uh, in the airport. Okay, okay. So. Um How's things looking for the next sort of three, five years for Climacell? I mean, presumably your, your, your data is going to get better, it's going to learn from itself, so yeah. the accuracy is going to be, I think, would get, get even better. But I mean, in terms of the commercialization of the, the product, how's that sort of looking for the next three to five years? Um, so Climacell is going to be the biggest company, uh, biggest weather company in the world. Uh, okay. We started in the US, but now really we are walking um, in the entire world, uh, okay. for example, India, you have 1.3 billion people mm. that don't have weather data. Mm. The, the only thing they have is like 26 radar from 9080 that doesn't okay. really, you know, don't really help them to understand the weather. Um, so think about uh, supplying data for 1.3 billion people, minute by minute uh, information okay. for the entire country. That's huge. Okay, so it, but that almost seems like that's moving beyond the you know working yeah. with the airline industry. It's yeah. almost like becoming a, yeah. a the Met Office from India, yeah. even though you're yeah. based in Boston, which is a exactly. Which is good. A, basically, I think we started with the US, but um, there is a more pressing need even for data in developing countries okay. uh, because either the data just doesn't exist or that the government doesn't provide it. Okay. Um, so it's on, not only that we'll provide the data, it will be much more accurate and much more in a timely manner. So instead of getting the data from the radar every 30 minutes or so, you'll get minute by minute information down to the street level in places like Latin America or India. Okay, and I mean, is that is that sort of on, on your to-do list or are, are you actually looking at outside of the US now? I mean, how, 
How much we're, business we're right outside now looking outside of the U.S., walking, uh, starting to work with airlines outside of the U.S., places like um, we think about New Zealand, Europe, um, mm. Southeast Asia, um, Latin America, yeah. Okay, and sorry, just one other question that maybe I should have asked earlier because it sticks out a bit at the end. Yeah. But I mean, what, 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 so how many people work for Climacell and are you, so are today, you data scientists or meteorological scientists or what are you, what are the skill sets? Uh, it's a good question. So as of today, we're uh, a little bit more than 50 people. Five zero? Yeah, five zero. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think what's unique about Climacell is that we have a very unique combination of people. Yeah. So we have people from atmospheric science, electrical engineering, computer science, uh, physics. Mm. Um, really, we are kind of, have a very diverse profile of engineers, yeah. and that's what makes us really uh, doing a better job with what we do, because we're able to, on one hand, better understand sensor from the electrical engineering point yeah. of view, uh, but on the other hand, really understand the weather from the atmospheric science, so we have Mm -hmm. uh, I would say almost a faculty of PhDs from yeah. MIT Harvard uh, is it helping us to solve this big problem. Yeah, I mean, I probably did them a disservice by calling them a meteorologist, but an atmospheric scientist sounds much more, much more clever yeah, and targeted and specialized. Okay, well, it's Alyssa, thanks very much for taking the time to join us. I really enjoyed talking. This is a, another sort of left field uh, um, interpretation of travel technology, and we like doing that occasionally on T News. I like the idea of being able to you know, recognize fluctuations in the wireless system and then somehow feed that into a weather forecast. I just think that's um, really clever stuff. So Itai Zlotik from Climacell, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, Martin Cowan, Editorial Director for T News. Uh, this is T News Live at the Aviation Festival presented by JetBlue Technology Ventures. We'll be back shortly, thank you very much.